My name is Jason Johansson, and I'm the Homicide Lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And my goal here today is to walk you through our investigation and what led us to the indictment of Dwayne Davis, also known as Keefe D, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. This case has been reviewed by our homicide team and homicide detectives for over two and a half decades. And ultimately, our persistence in this investigation has paid off. Let me walk you through a timeline of events uh, that, as we know them right now. Prior to September 7th of 1996, as we all know, Tupac Shakur was an artist who was signed with Death Row Records. And that Death Row Records and its CEO, Marion Suge Knight, were closely affiliated with the Mob Piru criminal street gangs and that they had an ongoing feud with the South Side Compton Crips. Dwayne Davis was the leader and shot caller of the South Side Compton Crips. And both of these gangs operated out of the Southern California area of Compton. On the night of September 7th in 1996, Tupac Shakur, along with Suge Knight, and members of their entourage, which include members of Mob Piru, came to Vegas to attend the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Members of the Southside Compton Crips, which included Dwayne Davis, along with his nephew Orlando Anderson, were also in attendance at the same event. As both were leaving the fight, members of Death Row Records spotted Orlando Anderson near an elevator bay bank inside the MGM, and at that time they began to kick and punch him near that elevator bank. I will now show you hotel security footage, as many of you have already seen, related to this incident. And on this incident, you will see Tupac Shakur, who is wearing a shiny satiny shirt, along with Marion Suge Knight, who is a large man in a brown suit, punching and kicking Orlando Anderson. Following this incident, you'll see hotel security intervene, and then they will leave the area of the fight. Little did anyone know that it is this incident right here that would ultimately lead to the retaliatory shooting and death of Tupac Shakur. Following this incident, Tupac and Suge Knight both left the MGM to make their way to a post-fight party, which was to occur at a local nightclub. At the same time, word had spread amongst members of the Southside Compton Crips of what had occurred inside the MGM. And then that's when Dwayne Davis began to devise a plan to obtain a firearm and retaliate against Suge Knight and Mr. Shakur for what occurred inside the hotel against Mr. Anderson. After Davis obtained a gun, he entered into a white Cadillac along with Terrence Brown, DeAndre Smith, and Orlando Anderson. Based on our investigation, this is where we know they were seated. At some point in time, as they were in the white Cadillac, Mr. Davis took the gun that he had obtained and provided it to the passengers in the rear seat of the vehicle. As they were bo both, as they were driving west on Flamingo Road near Koval, they had located the black BMW, which was driven by Suge Knight, and then the passenger seat was Tupac Shakur. And as they turned around, they pulled up near the passenger side of that vehicle and immediately began shooting at Mr. Knight and Mr. Shakur. Following that shooting was Tupac Shakur. And as they turned around, they pulled up near the passenger side of that vehicle and immediately began shooting at Mr. Knight and Mr. Shakur. Following that shooting, the white Cadillac fled the area southbound on Koval. And as our, after our officers arrived on scene, Tupac was later transported to the University Medical Center where he was treated medically and died approximately six days later on September 13th. My homicide section handled this investigation from its onset and for a short amount of time. And within a short amount of time, what we knew was that we were working a gang investigation where our victims, our witnesses, and our suspects 
were all from Southern California and not local to Las Vegas. Within the first few months of the investigation, our detectives knew most of the information I just briefed you on. However, we never had the necessary evidence to bring this case forward and present it for criminal charges. As time went on, this case had been reviewed multiple times by different investigators assigned to my section, but it wasn't until 2018 that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light related to this homicide. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation that he provided to numerous different media outlets. In our section, we knew at this time that this was likely our last time to take a run at this case to successfully solve this case and bring forth a criminal charge. It was at that time that this case was assigned to Cliff Mogg, a detective within my homicide section. And over the last five years, this, my section worked closely, hand in hand with the Clark County District Attorney's Office and followed a systematic investigative plan over the last five years. We've conducted countless interviews and corroborated numerous facts that were not only consistent with the crime scene on the night of the incident, but also corroborated and were consistent with the sequence of events that night. This ultimately led to us procuring a search warrant which was executed at Mr. Davis's residence in Henderson, Nevada. And following the execution of that search warrant, in close coordination with the District Attorney's Office, this case was presented to the grand jury which ultimately led to Davis being indicted on charges of murder. An arrest and indictment in the murder of legendary rapper Tupac Shakur. Really, investigators, they're going into stunning detail about how his murder was a retaliatory killing, that uh, an investigation in which they knew soon after the murder of Tupac around September of 1996, the details of, but a, a case that went cold until 2018, and now one that is headed potentially for a conviction. They showed this surveillance video and they said this is a moment, this altercation that ultimately led to that moment on September 7th, 1996 on the Las Vegas Strip where someone pulled up uh, multiple people yeah. in a white Cadillac, they believe, and shot into the passenger side of Tupac Shakur's vehicle, ultimately killing him days later, he died in a hospital. But I think people are in disbelief today Fans of his music, people who knew him, his family as well, they've carried this hurt for so long. And now knowing uh, that police have arrested someone, also they said there were three other suspects, but all of them are deceased. Yeah, and the arrest they made, you're looking at uh, the mugshot there on your screen, Dwayne Keith D. Davis, a 60-year-old man who they describe investigators as the head of a rival gang that had issues with uh, Tupac and his cohort. Uh, let's discuss these latest details with CNN's Josh Campbell and also with us, CNN legal analyst Joey Jackson. Josh, first to you. Uh, there was a lot of detail in uh, what we just heard from investigators there going over all the evidence that they collected. Absolutely. And, you know, this is where the timeline of this murder comes uh, into play here. So important. We know that after Tupac Shakur left a boxing match, uh, it was a white Cadillac that pulled up alongside his vehicle. Uh, Shakur was in the uh, car with uh, Suge Knight whenever those shots rang out. Now, the, interestingly enough, Dwayne Davis, the suspect who has now been charged here, uh, indicted in Nevada, he gave public statements. This is something that uh, the officer uh, alluded to there shortly, saying some of his own comments are being used here now is evidence, particularly if you look back, for example, in 1998, Davis gave an interview to BET saying he was inside that other car. He said he was in the front seat. He claimed that the shots actually rang out from the back seat. He refused to publicly name who else might be in that car, saying that that's the code of the street, that he didn't want to, uh, you know, run a miss, I guess, of any of his uh, cohorts there in the gang. Uh, but there was this question about, okay, so you're there. What other role did you have? Interestingly, we also just heard as the prosecutor talked about the law here as it applies, he said, you don't 
don't have to actually be the person to pull the trigger in order to be charged with murder in the state of Nevada. So we start to see these elements start to shape up. If he was in the vehicle, as he claimed, uh, and that actually plays into the law that you don't have to pull the trigger to also be charged with murder, police believe that he was, as they described, the shot caller here, the person who devised this plan to retaliate against Shakur and ultimately lead to this murder, guys.